It's all about the deal at Brunswick Auto Mart. Save big this month with deals like this. Don't miss the Make This the Summer event and lease a 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab Night Edition 4x4 with 20-inch blackout wheels for just $375 a month. Or lease a 2022 Ram 1500 Laramie Crew Cab for just $397 a month. Brunswick Auto Mart. Car buying made truly simple. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Believe Land Prep interview. I'm your host, Kevin Slez. With me, as always, Mr. Joe Yule. How are you doing tonight, Joe? I'm good, Kevin. I'm good. I'm excited for this week's games. We got a very special game this week and a very special guest participating in that game. Yes, we do have a very special guest. He is legendary high school football coach from St. Ignatius, Mr. Chuck Kyle. How are you doing, coach? I'm doing fine for a Wednesday. Wednesday is always a work day, right? So yeah, we got some good work in on Wednesday. Very true. So before yeah. we get into talking about your, your coaching career and your team, um, I understand you're an English teacher at St. Ignatius. How did you get started teaching English? <laughs> uh, well, okay. <clears throat> so I went to John Carroll University. and um, Yeah, I liked English better than math, okay? Or, <laughs> or, uh, there was no uh, great uh, profound thought there. Uh, <clears throat> I just enjoyed it. And I had some great teachers of English at, at John Carroll, really. I, great people, just uh, really got me enthusiastic about it. And so, um, okay, and I went to Ignatius. So uh, actually my senior year at, at John Carroll, I, I stopped playing. I, well, back then they never to told you about it, what a torn labrum was. I don't think they ever mentioned torn labrum, but I injured my shoulder and I was dislocated, and you do all these exercises, try to get back, and it wasn't coming back. So, sure, I have a torn labrum. I still have it, but it, back then they didn't worry about that. So, anyway, I, I started helping out uh, at, back at Ignatius, and uh, there was an English opening. So, there I went, and I've been there for, well, this will be 50 years of coaching. This is 50 years of coaching. Wow. Uh, uh, that's awesome. And you, I mean, you've, You've had some, you know, amazing teams. I mean, winning four national championships, um, you know, a lot of guys playing on that, you know, those a lot of the same guys playing on that 93 and 95 team um, and then winning one also in 2008, um, you know, be, being such a, you know, like having successful seasons like that and then having, you know, obviously 11 division one titles also, um, you know, what's it like to have a national championship? championship team you know like what's you know like what's what's the best part what's the worst part if there is a worst well <clears throat> obviously there's no playoff you know and i mean it, it's all uh sports writers and regional writers right writing people up so anyway um i i, I in reflecting back on that it, it, one you, clearly you knew you had a very good team coming back that's the important part of the, any kind of national ranking. Um, and, and your immediate uh, goal in hand is, is to win the state championship. Okay. That's, that's, you can deal with that. You can work with that. And then uh, whatever people from national views want to rank you, you, you live with it, but you, you certainly have, you don't want to sell your team short. <laughs> you can't tell them, oh, we're not that good. You know, come on, take a chance. Go ahead. Uh, you know, if you're going to lose one game, it's going to be out anyway. So, All right. But anyway, it, it, it was to answer totally your question there. When you make that statement to them, there's pressure that you're putting on uh, maybe a little to yourself, but, uh, but mostly on the players. Play. You have to have a mature group of kids to handle that, because that, that's that's tough. I mean, that, that's 
think every team on your schedule would love to knock you off. I mean, that, right. just, that just put more uh, incentive to do it. So that, it's quite, it's a task to do, uh, but it's worth, it's worth the gamble to say, yeah, we're going to shoot for it. All right. So you said you, you've got 50 plus years in coaching, uh, 40 years now, 40th year as your head coach at Ignatius, which is incredible. Um, what, what made you decide to get started into coaching high school football? Well, I, I certainly, uh, I, I certainly enjoyed <clears throat> playing and I, I was always somebody with a lot of energy, right? I have to stay busy. Right? I have to run around, do things. Right? <laughs> so, uh, I, I, in majoring in English uh, in college at that time, uh, to sit there and say when I first started was I interested in being a teacher and a coach. I'm, I wasn't sure about that. You, I just figured, well, maybe I want to be a lawyer. You know, if you're good in English. You're probably going to be able to write all these uh, legal documents and things like that. Uh, but it was kind of between that, and then. Uh, I, I just uh, started, I figured, okay, I'll, I'll take an education course course just to test the waters a little bit. And uh, I just found myself really interested in, in, in teaching. And I, I, would, I, would, I would do some camps, say, with some young kids, you know, college athletes will help there. And then I, I, I did, after my uh, sophomore year, I, I, I uh, took a... Uh, I, a summer job at it's called camp cheerful it's really uh, a camp for crippled children and uh i don't know if you've ever heard of it and uh so, way different from what uh, i would be used to as far as any camp situation very very moving very uh inspiring act i did it for two summers and i i just learned a lot about the human spirit uh what those kids go through and, and the, the thrill of, of helping kids uh, get better at, at what they do. Um, and, and that's, that just clearly rolled me into, oh, I, I, I want to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. I let, look in the mirror and be honest with yourself. That's what you're going to right. And coaching sports, it, it just, uh, I, again, I'm energy, wanted to get out there and move around and, and uh, you know, just, you, you get into it. You know, and there's just you talk to any coach, it's 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 like the chess match. You know, the intricacies of the schemes and all that. Once you get hooked on that, it's pretty fascinating. So, so that's what happened. And then I had no visions of grandeur. Trust me, <laughs> English teacher going to do some coaching, and things happen. You know, yeah. right. So you know. You, you know, you've been coaching for 50 plus for 50, this is year 50. And, you know, you've been around the, you know, you played obviously and you're, you know, you know, had the, had the opportunity to play at John Carroll, like you mentioned. And, you know, so when, when along that timeline did the, did the name Chico come out? Oh my. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's a good, honest question that people always sometimes are afraid to ask me. All right. This, the, the, that nickname actually, goes way back uh i was born in hammond indiana uh, i'm the youngest of four boys okay and uh what i can remember i'm, I'm a three-year-old four-year-old kid and i got three older brothers and i can remember we really liked the chicago white Sox, okay and they had nelly fox louis apparit these are names that historically they're in the hall of fame and all that stuff well the chicago white Sox had a player on their team named Chico Carrasquel. And I mean, he was good. He was a good a good player. And and uh, so, you know how little boys play out in the backyard? And I was, little, well, I just, you know, my brother was Nelly Fox and the other one was, you know, Louis Apparition. I I just called myself Chico Carrasquel. I'm Chico Carrasquel. You know, I have <laughs> my little mitts and, you know. Well, my brother started just, calling me that yeah well mm -hmm. we my dad you know went had to through the gi bill went and got his engineering degree and we had a job offering he had a job offering in cleveland ohio at uh, republic steel 
uh, to move up, right? And so packed the family in the car. We head to Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, and we go into this neighborhood, and we're meeting a bunch of new kids in the neighborhood, and my brothers are calling me Chico. So that, that was it. That was the rest of my life. So it's uh, been a, it's been a, it's been a long time of people calling me Chico. Uh, it has been, and and it, you know, you you start getting to that age where you go, no, not really, I should be called Chuck, Kyle, or Charles, or something like that. But you meet, you, you've known so many people that they go, hey, Chico, how you doing? And everybody goes, oh, okay. And then they start calling you. I, what can you, uh, that, that's right. the, that's the true story. Oh, I have to add one thing. So when I was, we moved right to Cleveland. This mm -hmm. is the truth. You can look it up. Within a <laughs> month or so, Chico Carrasquel was traded to the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> Four or five year old thinking, of course, I that's of course that makes sense to me. I swear to God, you can look it up. That's crazy, <laughs> still. Yeah, so that's that's a really cool story. <laughs> that's what happened. So, in your years as an assistant before you actually became head coach, are there really any coaches along the way that maybe influenced you as a head coach? Oh, wow, um, that's interesting. Um, you know, uh, I I think um, when in those early days, you know, the Ohio State football team was just pounding away and, and trying to do it. It influenced every coach in in Ohio, you know, with Woody Hayes and and one of that and just that that connection. Um, but in uh, defensively, what started to happen was more of the the. 4-4 four, four defense it used to be 5-2 and everybody put the uh, strong safety towards the wide side of the field and that's Woody Hayes okay but but people were coming out with a 4-4 four, four defense and so it it, it it looked like an interesting defense to to work with so I, I, I there was a number of, of coaches that I, I I started to study but not just offensively but defensively but gradually I, I became the defensive coordinator so I, I took that that four look uh, even a few steps further in, in 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 what we were doing, and you know we we were playing good defense and and, and that was that was good and uh, but and so by doing that gradually there there's that opportunity to move up and be the head coach so now it, was, it wasn't just the defensive side of the ball now it's the offensive too but I was a running back when I was at Ignatius so. Uh, it's not that the, I was only a defense. The, the offensive seeds kick back into gear. And now, you know, when you're the head coach, you coach everything. Honestly, you end up every every position you're dealing with and because you, it's just the way it works. And, and uh, so you do a lot of homework and you talk to a lot of people and you just grow with the sport. No, most definitely you do. Um, and, you know, you grew it as a coach with the sport, you know, throughout your tenure right now with St. Ignatius, but, you know, St. Ignatius has also grown as a football program from you taking over in um, 1983. And like how, you know, when, when people think of and anybody from Ohio, they, you know, you say a blue chip program, um, you know, in America and Ohio and Northeast Ohio. And, you know, you think, you know, one of the first schools that you think of, is St. Ignatius. So, you know, how, how do you, how do you build, you know, St. Ignatius into being this blue chip powerhouse program? Well, uh, it's one of, in all honesty, I never worried about that. I, I, I just worried about trying to find ways of getting, helping the, the young men get better. I, I, if I had to give any advice to a, to a young coach is, is, Block all out all the other stuff out, and be the type of coach that is always looking to help the kid. Uh, whether it's just footwork, whether it's just uh, uh, the punter just trying to you know a different uh, grip with the ball, and, and and just just being there to go. Hey, now one you just here's you're struggling with this idea. Um, why don't you try this technique and see if this works, and let's work with it because. Why I'm saying that is it, you got to be a successful. Coach. I, I think that's where you should enjoy football. 
uh, worrying about what your record is going to be. And it's wasted energy, to be honest with you. Um, you, you really have to enjoy the, the here's a kid that's wants loves the game of football and wants to improve. And you're able to uh, you're able to just uh, look at what he's doing and go offer some advice. And when that kid realizes, you know, that coach is really trying to help me. He's really trying to help me. Those kids will do anything for you. They will. They will go out of their way uh, uh, to be to, to because they, they sense that you're you're there for them. If, if you can do that, the, the kids, you, you look at what happens in the offseason. They're working and working and working. And then, and the techniques they're they're getting better at. And there's a good camaraderie. Look, that's what a big secret. Well, it's it's it's, it's what works. It really does. So that kind of relationship, I, I would tell that to any young coach, you know, don't worry about your record. <laughs> you know, don't worry about that. Get into being that type of coach that really looks at ways of, of helping the kid because the kid wants to learn. He wants to get better. And if you're that guy that can do that, those kids will play their hearts out for you. So, you know, being at Ignatius, obviously you're, you're a team that's expected to win and, and compete for a state title every year. But, but when you do get the, the occasional tough loss come up, how do you keep the, the boys from getting too down on themselves when, they, when they're, you know, expected to win every game for the most part? Well, I, it, it's it, the game of football, uh, you know, high school, you get 48 minutes. And, and to be a little philosophical at first, uh, we're one of the only sports that have a ball that has edges on it. Uh, you know, basketball, baseball, go ahead. They're round balls. And physics would say if you throw the ball this way, the ball is going to bounce a certain way, and you can predict that and go. But the football it has those edges. And you know what happens when you throw a football up in the air? Who knows where, the, where is it going, you know? And and you got to live with it. If it bounces towards you, hey, lucky break. And all of us have had those games where <laughs> that was – well, that was lucky that happened. And there's some where you go, you got to be kidding. Yeah, okay. And you got to live with that. And it's a beautiful sport that way to it for people to learn, young people to learn. And there's no guarantee about anything. And, and uh, But to handle that. So I'll be honest with you, when when we lose one, and that that we lose something, I mean, come on, we're human. But I always tell the kids, you know, we meet after the game and, you know, they're down. Even the coaches are down a little and I just simply say this. All right, fellas, look, we, you've got 24 hours. You have 24 hours to feel this. Okay. And you, you learn from that. So go ahead. You know, there's going to be, you're going to be down a little bit, but you only get 24 hours. That's it. After 24 hours, it's done. It's gone. And now it's who's the next per, uh, opponent? Let's go. And just to allow them that little bit of time. To go, okay, could have done some things better. I wanted to do better. I got to learn from that. But then to come out to practice, 24 hours is over, let's go and let's fix that. I think kids. So, I mean, it's a, one of the biggest reasons other than the, other than you retiring of why we, you know, we definitely wanted to have you on is, you know, this week it's the, you know, St. Ignatius, St. Ed's, and, you know, as Kevin and I talked about on our last episode, you know, it's, there, there's nothing like it in Ohio, you know, it's, it's, it's something special. You see the amount of people that come out, you feel the environment and there's just, there's just that feeling that you can't describe happening. Um, you know, what's it like being a part of that rivalry for so long and, you know, getting to coach against a guy like, you know, Tom Lombardo, who's an amazing guy also. Um, and an amazing coach, you know, what's, what's that, what's that like? Well, okay. First of all, the, the, the kids, the, they know each other, you know, they, they, a lot of them went to grade school together. Um, you know, and they, they're friends, mm -hmm. you know? uh, but there's this one week out of the year, you know, you have to do this. Let's go. <laughs> gotta, you know, the cliche of bragging rights, whatever, you got it, let's go. Let's do it. So, you know, it's, it's an intense game. All right? It's a clean game, by the way. I mean, it, it's good technique all the way through. There's no screwing around. Um, and it, it the energy level is superb. You know? 
almost sometimes too bad, you know, settle down, everybody. You know, right. Happen too. It can it can haunt you. And it's a big crowd, obviously. And so it, it, it high school kids should have that experience to play in games like that. When you have two really good teams playing, you will get a crowd. Okay. Uh, but I'm not even talking rivalry now. It's a really great high school football. You're going to get a good crowd and people really interested. And the energy would be, is great to be, to witness. Um, the rivalry. Well, it, yeah, it's, it, it's been played for a number of years and, it, and, and uh, um, I'll be honest, I'm not necessarily a, a rivalry guy. Uh, and it, if you let me explain that, I, I try very hard to win the first game of whoever we're playing, and then hopefully that worked. And here comes the next team, and I, I channel my energies there because I always felt, well, here we are, St. Ed's, my seventh game. Well, what can I do to get ready for that seventh game? Well, work on the first game and get better. And then after that one, try to get better for the second game, and that'll help you go all the way through the season. And that's the only way I could ever figure out, you know, I, I don't circle the calendar. Hey, that's the one. And I'm sorry. There's for us to get to the level where we need, we got to handle those six games before that and get better each game and so on. That's the truth. I mean, that's the only way I know how to do it. Right. And, but it's going to be a fun game and, 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 and uh, the energy is going to be superb. And then when we, you know, we finish the game, there's Tommy in and we go, Hey, We'll probably see you in a few weeks, okay? When the playoffs go, okay, see ya. <laughs> you walk on, so that's the way it goes. Awesome. Well, uh, Coach, we appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your day to come on with us. Uh, we wish you the best of luck, luck this Saturday and the rest of the season, and uh, best of luck uh, in your retirement. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate what you do for football, fellas. Keep it up. Thank you, Chuck. Got it. Have a good night. Good night.